Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the very first live Sunday's Bash Bog podcast. And we're here at the Bolton FM studios in sunny Bolton, of course. And joining me today, okay, for the very first, now I said victim, and my guest laughing, you can probably hear him laughing in the background. Um, no victim, okay, but our very first guest, and Philip Monaghan, okay, good morning, Philip, how are we? Good morning, I'm, I'm great, are you, Sander? Absolutely wonderful, sir. Great stuff. So this is Phil, he's sat here with us, and we are here, like I said, for the very first podcast. Phil, right, okay, let's get straight into it, my friend. Um... We've crossed paths many, many times uh, over the years and never had chance to sit down and have a chat <laughs> till now. And uh, I'm very excited about this, actually, when I found out what Phil does. So we're going to start off very first and very simple <laughs> with uh, Phil. Uh, where was you brought up, my friend? Um, I was brought up in, in Dean, in Bolton, um, <clears throat> and uh, just off Holton Lane in, in, uh, in Dean. Um, I lived there till I was about about 10, 11. And then we moved to Great Lever for a couple of years. Um, brought up with uh, a big Irish family up there in Dean. Six brothers, three sisters. Um, six yeah, brothers? Yeah, so six brothers, three sisters, wow. yeah. Uh, so we sort of 11 of us in the family all together. Oh, crikey. Wow. Yeah. Not so. television. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I have to get that one in. Yeah. Sorry. Great. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's about it for that, really. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, and um, basically, well, Phil, what I'm going to ask you. Well, that was the next question, actually. Uh, yeah. I was going to say what um, you know, what what family members you've got. You already answered that. That's right. Uh, what school did you go to? I went to um, the primary school, Saint Ethelberts. Uh, probably a lot of people from Bolton know that, obviously. Right. Um, and then I went to English Martyrs, uh, up near the Royal Bolton Hospital, it's called now. Yeah. Um, they knocked that down, and then they built the, um, I can't remember what it's called now, they've got a new sort of college type thing up there now. Um, yeah, so I went there for, from 74 till 78. Um, not not the best experience, to well, be honest. Yeah, but I was going <laughs> to ask you that, Go actually. You're, you're jumping ahead here. What, um, so what was school like for you? Um, no, well, like I said, it wasn't the best experience. Um, starting from primary school, really, um, I sort of had a lot of uh, issues with sort of mindle, mindling with other kids and things like that. Uh, kept myself to myself, didn't really speak much. Um, obviously, that's affected... Uh, my work, you know, learning difficulties, things like that. Um, so that that wasn't the best start in life, really. So basically, I'd, then I moved to the secondary school, uh, not being able to read or write, anything like that. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so I struggled quite a lot through through that period. Um, less school, um, couldn't read, couldn't write, couldn't write my name, couldn't write simple words like cat, dog anything like that wow um so basically th that's really th the experience he had from that right. so it I wasn't good i always find <laughs> it, no i always find that anybody that's got a story to tell usually you know it, it all stems back from way back you know and we'll touch on this psychologically in a moment yeah. but um you know obviously what everybody's wondering why you you know what it is you do phil and that's the interesting <laughs> part i suppose but you know you can't get to the interesting bit without <laughs> going through the prelims of, of how we got to you know to where we got to that's right you know, um it's not about me today i've got my story and a lot of people yeah. know it yeah. it's all about you today and I'd, I'd like to basically well just tell everybody what it is you do yeah um i've created um, a psychological training program which basically um, helps people to um, so I look at the selves in a little bit more detail, look at, at the belief systems, how they built that up over the years, um, which is basically what I did. I looked at myself a little bit closely, um, went to the library, looked, looked up a bit psychology and how people think and things like that. Uh, got a few books on it. Um, I, I, again, I have a lot of difficulties because I couldn't read that well. So I struggle with that. Right, yeah, that's not going to be easy. That's, to that's not the best. Yeah, and I don't think uh, I don't think those, those type of books come with pictures either. Do they? <laughs> so obviously, I look for books with pictures in, yeah. like you do. <laughs> yeah. So I, I've yeah. sort of um, I've developed that really. I, I'd probably say just short of 
sort of 20 years I've been doing helping people with uh, to move forward in their life uh, through sort of issues that they've got um, so with seeing so many people obviously I've built my own way of doing things um, I've probably seen probably just short of 11,000 people now 11,000? yeah that's 11, incredible. Thousand, so that's on a one-to-one, -one, not groups as oh, well. Yeah, um, and you said you, it's 20, is it 20 years Yeah, just short this? 20 years. Just short of 20, so two decades. You know, that's, you know it's not to yeah. be sneered at. Um, <laughs> you, you, you call this the Self Mastery Programme. Is yeah. that the name of, of, the of what you go underneath? Yeah, the Self Mastery Programme. Um, I obviously designed that name um, because it's all about the person. It's not about me telling them how, how to do it, really. It's just me sort of guiding them really and right. they, they've sort of got to put the effort in put the work in because you yeah. know yourself you, you've got to put that effort in as well oh a million percent yeah you know um with sort of when people go for help the, the problem they have is they go to the person for the help as opposed to thinking they, they don't feel sort of powerful enough to realize that they can get over that themselves so they're going to look for an external source which is obviously the therapist right so all the onus is on the therapist as well then for yes. to make them better where I yeah. thought well over time what I've realised is it's the belief system of the person and that's what the self masters sort of <clears throat> works from the belief system of the person so we work on that interesting very interesting I mean um, you know just made a couple of notes myself here I was talking about that I mean you, you obviously you work with people with anxiety um, <coughs> with stress which to me yeah. uh, and depression you know yeah. those three headline things are what I think are the biggest um, you know, we talk about, let's talk about, you know, the biggest diseases in the world. Um, we talk from on a physical <coughs> side, um, you know, like cancer, yeah. um, you know, heart attacks, um, strokes coming from things like diabetes yeah. and different things. You know, those are like the three, four main killers of, mm -hmm. of why the human species, what, it's yeah. just, you know, why we die. Um, right. But I think what leads to those things, I think of those the three things that, that you actually touch and the subject that you you do which are for me those three anxiety stress and depression i mean you know better you've done this for 20 years yeah um as anybody who knows and if you don't know me obviously you know i'm, I'm a thai boxing instructor and it works uh, physiologically with what i do mostly i'm a very physical person yeah but that doesn't come without the psychological fact and Correct. you know um the mind that's right so you know for you Phil, I mean, you, you must be kept busy because anxiety, <laughs> stress and depression. I mean, yeah. you, uh, you know, I'm surprised there's not more people like yourself. You know, yeah. I, I think we need more people like yourself. Yeah, definitely. There's a, there's a big shortage of help for people. Um, <clears throat> another thing I've realised as well is, is obviously the person's obviously got low self-esteem when they've got anxiety, depression, and it's breaking through that barrier to go and get help. I mean, a lot of my clients that I see... Um, they've had the problem for like 10, 20, 30, 40 years even. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. I've seen sort of clients at 86 wow. and they've still got the anxiety. They've had that for 70 years. Oh. Eight, you know, and it's like, and I'm thinking... That's a strong cross to bear, I'm, isn't you it? You know, I'm thinking, wow, years. you know, why is that person still not... Why have they not moved forward and that, where, where's the help? Yeah. Do you know, you're not taught to, to sort of help yourself, really. Yes. Well, I mean, way. the national health is stretched to its limits, as we know. <clears> and, you know, there's so much... I don't want to talk, go down that subject. So another, yeah. I think that could be another day, that. Definitely. Um, you know, the national health is something that, you know, was created in this country. One of the few... Not many countries in the world have it. You know, I think we're, we're, we're very blessed to have it, personally. But, yeah. you know, over the last sort of... Probably over the last decade, mm. um, you know, people have been pushing, haven't they, for the mental health issues. Definitely. And it's... <coughs> Excuse me. I was my my, my partner is a nurse, and I, I you know I was saying that. <coughs> unfortunately, when you say mental health, what's the first thing anyone? <coughs> yeah. What's the first thing people think of? Yeah, something wrong with something you. wrong with you. Yeah. Um. You know, if you go to say like, oh, I'm suffering from a broken arm. Oh, are you okay? Yep. No one bats an eyelid. Yeah. You know, if you've got a crutch. Yeah. You know, you've got a plaster on your head. Oh, what have you done? Oh, I've banged my head. I've got a yeah, black yeah, eye. I've broke my hand. Yeah. You know, I've brought my foot. Oh, I hope you get better soon. You know, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, bandage yeah. that up. Yeah. You can't put a bandage on your brain, can you? No. Um. So for me, you know, I mean, I've got a friend um, who is a life coach, a mind coach yeah. uh, called Vinnie Shawman. And, you know, I wish I could split him into 20 because, <laughs> you know, he, he and people like yourself, you know, we need more people like you yeah. and more people like Vinnie. And, you know, like I can do my bit. But yeah. I'm pushing on the angle of fitness, really. <clears throat> yeah. um, and I think maybe working with people like yourself. Yeah. Um, do you actually teach people, uh, Phil? Have you ever thought about doing that? Um, well, at, at the end, of, obviously, we're finishing at the end. We go a little bit into detail about that. If you ask me that later on. Um, okay. But yeah, that, that that is sort of on the agenda anyway. Um, we'll, obviously, we'll 
to look into that later on. Um, but you, you, you touched on the subject of, of that sort of the physical as well. Um, when, when you're young, obviously you're taught to be strong, stand up for yourself and things like that. Um, but when you can't do that, then what do you do? You know, you sort of get withdrawn. You know, and then That's you right. look for well, if you're not. If you've not got, if you're not like ten men, you've not got muscles, you're not strong. It means that you're weak. You know, and people look down on you. So what you do then, you look for some sort of, um, some sort of help in the physical side of it. So what you do, you might go start going to the gym and build yourself up and things like that. Yeah. So yeah, you look yeah. strong, you look fit, okay. But the the pain is still inside. You know, the the, the actual um, the belief is still there that you're not powerful, even though you've got big muscles, you still don't feel powerful. You know, and that's where I, you just touched on it and about the physical, but it, it's the mental side of it where it really all comes from. And once you understand that you can do anything you want in life if you put your mind to it, so we're back in, into the mindset yes. and the belief system, which is that's where the, the most powerful thing is, not in your muscles, you know, in your fitness, it's in your mind. So that's what you've got to build up on that. And that's what I teach people. Like I said, I think that's important. I mean, everything starts with the mind. And we, we always <coughs> say that, you know, having the right mindset yeah. is, you know, you, you can underline that and put it in inverted commas. Um, you know, you, you can't stress enough, can we, really, that that is okay. the most important thing. You know, it's, and when, what is it? I mean, everyone says it, but not everybody actually applies it. <laughs> yeah. The old saying, it's, the, it's, it's an age old saying, mind over matter. A lot <laughs> yeah. of people say it and throw they that around, know. I think, yeah. very casually. <clears> they, they don't know feel, what it is, that's the and thing. And they don't, they're not actually attaching themselves to that, are they? Don't, they don't, a lot of people don't know what the mind is. A lot of people think it's like mumbo jumbo um but if you look at the mind as the most powerful thing in the world um the mind is obviously uh, more powerful than, than the pen um if you look around anywhere and you look at all the things that have been created in life anything that you can see in here like outside cars buses planes you know these big high skyscrapers things like that i mean magnificent buildings you know and you've got to think about where's that from though it's not somebody said oh I'll just build that they thought about it in the mind. Yeah, so yeah. basically, if you look at everything that's been done, it's all sort of Built manifested the through manifested the through mind, the brain, yes. which is they don't look at the mind. They just look at the what you produce. And the product. The yeah. product, you see, yeah, which the point. mind, where it's all coming from, really, everything that's been created. Very good point. Like yeah. I said, well, you know, I, I say now, so, you know, I'm swinging <laughs> a pen around here, and I always say, you know, people go, you know, the pen's mightier than the sword. Yeah. And I always say, well, you know, the microphone is mightier than the pen. Um, right. <laughs> that's, that's using the brain. I don't yeah, really yeah. use that very often. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> Phil, I just wanted to touch on a couple of, um, you know, I asked you about, um, obviously, you know, the clients that you've had, and it's easy. Yeah. Anyone, you, can, you know, I can say, oh, you know, I've, you know, well, I've done Thai boxing for 40 years. It doesn't make me great. Yeah. Um, you know, you're only as good as the, the, the people that you help, as our people I help and train, the people that you right. help. Yeah. You know, this is why you're right. here today. And if you don't yeah. mind, I'm just gonna read out one of your, um, and as it says here, um, Philip Monahan has strict written permission to use these testimonials. That's right. So, um, first of all, I'm gonna go with this one. <laughs> Dear Philip, more than 20 years ago, I was diagnosed by a doctor with clinical depression. Since then, I have taken three different types of antidepressants on three separate occasions counseling and psychotherapy, none of which had any long-term effects. I became withdrawn, bad anxiety attacks, and did not function well on a social level. But the worst thing for me was the tiredness all the time. I decided I had something, sorry, I decided I had to do something. I found your number and gave you a call. It was the best thing I ever did. I started the 12-week sessions, skeptical at first, but as the weeks went by, I got a little better and my energy levels increased. By week 10, I was feeling fantastic and people were starting to notice a difference. That's Thanks great. to you, I have my life back. <laughs> I no longer walk with my head down. My anxiety attacks have gone and I can now go out and do things I want to do. Thank you very much, Philip. And that is from a lady fantastic. called Val. That yep. is absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, that, that, that sort of that's, um, testimonial there um, brings a lot back to me. That from obviously from where I started off and where I am today, it's sort of a bit similar to that. You know, low self-esteem, not being able to go out. So what do you do then? You know, you just sit back, you know, and you, you struggle through your life. Well, you know, I mean, I've got a couple of more testimonies and if we get the time, I don't, I'm thinking we've got probably about um, six or seven minutes left here. We can run through some, a couple of more of these testimonials, Phil. Yeah. But, um, you know, just on, um, you know, obviously at the end of this, uh, people will probably want to know, uh, <laughs> and, uh, as I would, 
you know, how would you get hold of Philip Monaghan? What would you do? I think yeah. the hardest thing is anything. It's, it's making contact with people. Do you not feel? I mean, we went last night to the uh, Bolton Expo, um, which is in the fabulous, uh, what, what's that building called? It's the bridge. It? The bridge in the Bolton. Bridge. It's the first Absolutely. time I've ever been. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Bolton FM Radio was there. Yeah. You was there. Yeah. I was there. All the companies from around Bolton. Um, and there was, you know, like charitable things. There was so many things going on. And, you know, we bumped into a guy there and we were just chatting away, weren't we, to people. And That's it's right. interesting how, how people, even with massive skills, yeah. can't communicate. <clears throat> um, yeah. And I think this comes back down to, you know, those three headlines. I know there's, the, the, you know, like I said, I mean, I've written this down, the anxiety, stress, depression. Yeah. You know, there's little subdivisions of those, <clears throat> isn't there? Do you know what I mean? Is, yeah. of, of confidence, which I think is one of the, yeah. I say confidence is king. I've said that yeah. for years. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone's got the, the choice, haven't they? Def- but, definitely. Um, yeah. You know, just as a, as a oh, I'm just going to throw it out there to you now, Phil. Just for example, What's the basic thing you can say? Obviously, you're not going to give your secrets. Oh, no, they're not <laughs> secrets, otherwise, <it> there are <laughs> secrets. Then you, you know, you won't be here. Um, yeah. yeah. The what was you? What would you say? Just basically to somebody who say who, who knew what you did, and they just said, "I suffer from anxiety, Phil." Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. What What can you do for me in that area? What would you, What was the basic things you would say to in a that person? area? Um, right. The first thing you could do, obviously, contact me first of all. Um, what a lot of people uh, struggle with is maybe picking the phone up and speaking to me on the phone, which is where that's from, to sell the lack of confidence to do that, right. and the self-belief. Um, what I would say is you can text me. It's, it's easy to text for a lot of people. Go, you know, explain yeah, a little bit. No, there's no um, face-to-face. Yeah, what the problem there, is. is uh, what yeah. I found is that I put, uh, when I put my details on the website, what I found was when I put text me, I got more text uh, for that obvious reason. Right. They can text you, it's because they feel safe in their environment, it's getting them out of that environment. Yeah. It's a difficult part. Uh, so what I would say to them is text me. You know, look look, look me up in the internet. You, have to, you can just type my name in Google, Philip Monaghan, and it comes up about the history, um, articles I've wrote. It tells you everything about me. So you get to know me a little bit more that way yeah. and see my pictures, see what I look like. Yeah. Do you know, getting well, that That's bit. the thing, isn't it? I mean, you know, it was last <coughs> night, you, I was walking, as I was saying, <coughs> you know, I was walking through the hall, and I just seen a face like nod over at me and look at me and it was you and I sort of like made eye contact yeah, very yeah. briefly because I was running about I was <laughs> I got their legs I was teaching my class my time boxing class but it, it's like it's just making facial you know knowing putting face name to face yeah. and then obviously if somebody feeling you know who's obviously anxious like I say it's going to put so many brakes on oh, people yeah, isn't it that, the foot is the foot's on the pe- on the brake pedal that's it. and it's like I can't I can't and I hate that word yeah. I always say take the T <laughs> take the T off can't <laughs> yeah and you've yeah. got can that's right so yeah, that that's what I would uh, recommend to people. Um, you can find, like I said, a lot about me on the internet. Um, articles I've wrote on social anxiety disorder, things like that. Um, look into that. You probably connect with that a little bit. So it's getting in that way. I suppose you're saying, you know, you're thinking, oh, I'll just ring Phil up, and you know, you sat there for days, weeks, and they all oh, ring Phil, I ring Phil. Yeah. You don't get around to it. It's just making that first step, really. Um, I mean. <clears throat> Some people do contact me and they say, do you do home visits? Yeah. Um, well, I could do, you know, but I don't. Right. And the reason for that is to, I need to get that person to take that first step. Ah, you see? Good point. Okay. Yes. I mean, they could, you know, they say, well, can you come to my house? And, you know, Comfort I said, well, zone. I could do. I said, but I need you to take you out of your, your, your environment that you're in, that you've stayed in for so long. We need to take that first step. Um, I haven't got a problem if you didn't want to come to the practice. I haven't got a problem if you wanted to meet me somewhere and have a, a talk that way. You know, you feel a little bit um, not confident about walking in the practice, things like that. I mean, that's a, a big thing. It's a big step. For when I first people. went to for, for my therapy years ago, when, as part of my training, it was really bad. The anxiety was really bad. I mean, yeah. that's what I was there for. But I still felt like walking out. Right. It is, a, it is the toughest step. But then, like yourself, you know, <clears throat> excuse me you know to help yourself you have to help yourself literally you know excuse the pun but Definitely. um like you said to make that first step so it's a good point that phil yeah, thank that's you that's a difficult bit yeah yeah um no we're gonna you know just before we, we wind up i'm just gonna go th- i was gonna give caught another one of these um because i think these testimonies are fantastic phil and you know these are genuine and you know you've just picked up like you said for all in 20 years i'm sure you've had a lot more than this but <laughs> you know we can only highlight a few of these Definitely. things and you know yeah. brilliant anyway <clears throat> excuse me philip has been a massive help to me before I came, I suffered with really bad stress, which used to make me ill. And this had a negative impact on my confidence. 
Since they have seen Philip, I am able to control and deal with all forms of stress and have learned to relax with the techniques that Philip has taught me. My confidence has grown and grown and given me the opportunity to be self-employed and successful in my area of work, which I would never have been able to consider before. I found Philip a great help. He was very professional, calming, and able to identify the issues that needed to be addressed. Thank you, Philip, from Paul. And he said here, I cannot begin to imagine how much of a dark and unhealthy place my mind would have been if I hadn't have met Phil. I'm very grateful to him for transferring my life, sorry, for transforming my life for the better and giving me the opportunity to be myself again at last. Okay, and, and that's Adam, that's another one. So, you know, um, just amazing uh, things being said about you, Phil. And, you know, yeah. no one, you know, no one is a, likes to self promote as in, you know, I'm the best. No yeah. one, no one is like, you yeah. know, people don't, we don't, nobody likes arrogance, you no. know, and no, but confidence. I've always said, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a thin line between confidence and arrogance. Yeah, definitely. And you've got to have confidence. You know, and <clears throat> this is something that you give, you know, yeah. something that I give. Yeah. But, you know, I'm very interested in what you do, and I think we need to meet up again. And I think we have to Definitely. do another blog, and I think we have to do another <laughs> podcast, because I think we're scratching well, the well, surface here, that. aren't we? Definitely. Um, yeah. You know, we're going to finish off on a couple of things. Um, well, basically, where do you see yourself and the self mastery pro program in the future? Yeah. Where do you see yourself um, you know, in, the, in the next coming years? Yeah, you, you sort of like hit on it early on about um, ever, ever sort of teaching people it, really. Um, which is not it's not an easy task to do, obviously. Um, yeah, um, basically what I'm looking at doing is training uh, self mastery program consultants, um, where they would be in different areas of the UK and abroad as well, um, where they could look at the self mastery as maybe something to help themselves, um, and giving them the access to that. Um, I mean, I, I touched on the, the thing that I've brought. I'm on my third book at the moment. I'm sort of three quarters way through that now, and that's going to be directed at that. So if people look at that, they obviously get the details off that. Um, and then I'm looking at putting a program together where they will train as a consultant then, and it will be a certified training course as well. You know, they obviously do a test at the end. It's not turn up at weekend and gives you money. <laughs> right. Not one of those courses. No, so good. But you know, this sounds absolutely fantastic. Like I said, I think we need a part two because I don't think we're <laughs> in half an hour, we're not going to get through half of what we need to get through. Definitely not, uh, Sandy. You, Phil. Um, Definitely not. You know, like I said, I think we scratched the surface. And guys, if you're watching this and anyone, you know, from around Bolton and, you know, around the world, crikey, you know, we're not just, you know, we're going global with this. Definitely. Um, the Self Mastery Programme. Have you got a website? Um, I have. Um, if you can just put uh, Philip Monaghan as one word. So it's F so P H I one L one L I P yeah M O N M O N A G A G H A N H A N dot co dot uk co dot uk. Um, you can just type my name in Google Philip Monaghan. Um, there's plenty of ways you can get in touch with me, really. From and that. under when if you, if you Google Philip Monaghan, will it? I mean, I mean, well, there's know, probably like three pages that come up. I was going to say, yeah, because <laughs> we've all got, uh, um, you know, there's, yeah. you know, there's some Sandy Ult somewhere. Yeah. I know there is, but what, um, you know, will it say Philip Monaghan um, self? Mastery yeah, we we'll say program, yeah. You can, you can type the self mastery program as well. Right. You can type that in. in maybe Google. That's, maybe that's a website you need to buy. Yeah, the self mastery the program. Self mastery program. Yeah. And they can, I'll come up there on that right. as well. And, you know, Phil, yeah. are you happy to give out your phone number today? Yeah, I am, yeah. Okay, yeah. just had to ask him that, so okay, yeah. we're all right with that. <laughs> yeah. So okay. your telephone number, Phil, is? It's 07856. 07856. 709. 709 469 469. So again, everybody, if you're listening from anywhere, guys, that number, again, 07856. Yeah. 709469. Yeah. Well, guys, this is where we finish the uh, our first ever, um, as it said, the Sunday Sunday's Bash blog. So you want to raise your cup, Phil? It's Definitely. an absolute pleasure to meet you, sir. And uh, Great, Sandy, yeah. I want to thank Paul Neff really Studio for the opportunity for us to be here today. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, it's been great, but we definitely need to do a part two, Phil, because I think, I think seriously, I've learned some things today. Yeah. And I think we need to do, well, the program, never mind 30 minutes. I think, <laughs> I think we could do 30 hours on this we'll subject. Probably do 30, yeah? 30 weeks, even. 30 weeks, even. <laughs> you know, we definitely, definitely, Sandy, that, yeah. that's de definitely got to be on the cards, like you said. You know, okay. it's like we just scratch the surface, really. 
Brilliant. Well, it's been a pleasure. And I want to, yeah. you know, speaking on a, on a personal thing, from me, um, you know, everybody knows Facebook's a massive platform, Twitter, yeah. Instagram, you know, yeah. everything else. You know I mean? For those people who know me with my crazy haircuts and I'm out there, aren't I? Putting stickers right, and yeah. advertisements everywhere. Yeah. You know, even got, I mean, even got the cups, you know what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I <laughs> I, I just feel that, um, you know, you advertise what you do and what you're passionate about. And I can feel that passion come through with you, Phil. And, you know, I want to say for all the people that, you know, I've said, who wants to come on this? You were the first person to stick your <laughs> hand up and you went, I'm in. And he's <laughs> here. I'm here, yeah. And we've done do it. it. So, yeah, do guys, it. thank you very, very much. Yeah. And we'll finish off with basically, a, you know, a healthy handshake. And, Phil, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's a pleasure for me as well, Sam. Thank you, thank very, you very, very much. much. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, round two, part two. We're here for Sandy's Bash Blog podcast, the first one ever. And joking aside, of course, we had Philip Monaghan first with our first victim, our second victim of the day. Okay, a good friend of mine, and it is Mrs. Adele Davidson. Good morning, Sandy. Good or morning. afternoon, is it? Is no, it, is it? Which is it? I don't know. Just passed. Right. So, yeah. Adele. Now, a lot to talk about with you. Okay, obviously. Yeah. Um, we go back a long way, but, you know, probably it's not about that. It's about what we do. So, Adele, where are you from? Little Lever, Bolton. Okay. Born and bred. Brilliant. Fantastic. And uh, what I know you're an absolute, like me, you're an exercise freak, and you're one of the most positive women in the uh, fitness <laughs> industry that I know. <laughs> um, what got you started? My dad. Right. When I was about five years old, um, my parents split up um, and my dad was a very, very keen cricket player. So basically I got brought up on the cricket pitch. Wow, I so didn't know that. yeah, at six years old I was the best corky catcher in Little Lever. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew that. Uh, something you were yeah, really, yeah, cricket. I'm very wow. good at cricket and all yeah. ball sports, yeah. Wow. So hockey and rounders. Right. Used so. to play for the county, so he brought me up well. Brilliant. Blooming mm. heck, eh? I know. I'm saying. And um, so what led you into, how did you get, because I know, you know, you teach like multiple classes. It does like you've got a, you've had a mad regime over the years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, how long, how long have you actually been doing it then? Teaching. teaching. Qualified teacher since 2007. Right. But actually taking part in classes for about 30 years. Right. Because that's mm. obviously, uh, you know, saying to Phil before, he had 20 years experience, uh, you know, what he does. Um, you know, it's it's what you've done prior, isn't it? Yeah, it builds you up to what you were, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. as you said then about, you know, the cricket thing, so from, you know, from a very early age, mm. um, uh, that's amazing. And just give us, if you can, I know you probably, you know, you probably forget a few, but tell us about the early days of, of, the, of, the, of the classes that you did prior to teaching. You know, what, um, I'm guessing a lot of it aerobic type, was it? Yeah, or? I used to go to a gym in Bury, which is no longer there, sadly, called LA Fitness. Started off there when one of my children was very young and then it just progressed. And the instructors, what were there, just said, Adele, you are a mental, you need to be an instructor. <laughs> which we both are, both me and Sandy. Got to be crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, so in, then in I the did, I uh, did, yeah. and then it's the best thing I ever did. Brilliant. I absolutely love it. Well, they say, don't they, that if you can find something that you love doing, um, it, you'll never have to work another day in your life. Yeah, I don't go to work. Yeah, I don't. No. I, I, do you know what I mean? You're a I go to similar. play. She's a, she's a, she's a, as we say, she's a sister from another mister. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, it's incredible that the, the likeness we've got is, is, yeah. is mad. And, you know, I, I first, where did we first meet? Well, you probably won't remember. But I know you from back in the day, from the days of Cinderella Rockefellers, uh, Pink Panther and Ritzes. Ritzes, right. yeah. Okay. I think we're... Uh, do you know how I knew this would happen? We're too loud. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sound thing's going off the system. All right, well, so quiet. We're to, can, we do, can, we, can, we, can we do this interview quiet? Yeah, of course we can. I don't think we can. <laughs> right, we'll do it quiet. So back in the day, you're in an icon. Yeah, and there used wow. to be a club. A, a place where we all used to go after hours in Bury. Yes. And it, I can't remember what it was called, but it's up near that garden centre. Yes, it was called Roscoe's. That's the one, and we all used to be there. Ah, no, I do remember. And I would have been from. 18 years old then. Wow. That, so how old would I be? Would I be about 18 and a half? No. 17? No. No, I don't know. Slightly older. Yeah, old enough to get in. <laughs> Anyway, so classes, let's just talk about these things. So you did, you did, um, 
aerobics. Yeah, step aerobics You've used to be my, yes. I mean, back then there were so many different yeah, types. Step, I started off doing body pump, body combat, um, and then I moved on to the aerobics, but step aerobics was my thing, and I was quite well known for it. Right. Yeah, because it was crazy. Yeah, I mean, that was a quite a... Um, you know, I know a lot of people in that industry. Uh, one of my Thai boxing um, champions called Brian Power, I um, mean, his missus worked, uh, did, um, I think, called Power Aerobics, which yeah. is a great name, because it's yeah. called Power, what a yeah. great last yeah. name that is. Um, and he did them all over the place. I remember going to one of them, and he was in, he was the first one I ever, a bit very much like the American mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. He was in a, on a platform in, in the middle of this sports centre in somewhere like, I don't know, it was Hindley or Wigan or somewhere, I forget where it was. And he, he was back to back with his missus, and she was doing like an, an easy one, and yeah. he was doing the hard yeah, one. Yeah. And he was like, he's like me, and he was like military, you know, he's yeah. like, boom, boom, and she's doing the softer one. So they got two levels, easy and hard. Yeah. And um, he had a, he had the headset on. I'm talking 25 yeah, years yeah. ago, mm -hmm. which was so so ahead of time. And um, there was, I'm guessing, in this room, there was some uh, between a, about never less than a hundred, up to 200 people. Classes are off the scale. I mean, you yeah. don't see that these days now because only, there's only so at, many yeah, different choices. Only at the fitness conventions you see. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a big, big one uh, every March in Blackpool. So, right. thousands. Right. So, um, just touched on those, you know, I think, again, what I said with Phil, you know, we're going to have to do a part two because we've got so much to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, let's, let's jump fastly forward from the old school to the mid school to the new school to you now. With all that knowledge you've had, Adele, and all these millions of classes that you've done and you've taught and everything, what's the main thing you're doing now? Hot yoga. Right. It's. Um, Tell us about hot yoga. For them, because um, obviously you've never heard of, people have heard of yoga. Um, there's so different forms of that, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, you can t explain that in a minute if you could. But um, just you know, on the onset, what is hot yoga? Can you explain it to everybody? Basically, it's yoga uh, done in a room heated to between 36 and 40 degrees. Wow. And you get a really good cardiovascular workout from not doing a lot, uh, held in yoga poses. Uh, I love it because like, I taught last night, it looked like I'd been swimming. <laughs> it did. I was absolutely drenched. And my style as well is a flow. And for those who know me, my personality shines through. And it's probably like no other class you've been to. So there's your invite, in, that Sandy. Keeps inviting uh, me. Keeps asking me to do these. Uh, <laughs> um, and where do you do them at? I do it at a gym in Farnworth called Bodywise. It's a ladies-only gym, but men are welcome. Um, I have a work? website. Uh, we we sneak, sneak we sneak them in the back way. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Guys, sneak you in the back way. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. tell anyone. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I do it on Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, Friday nights, Sunday mornings. I have a page on Facebook, uh, Bolton Hot Yoga dot Fitness, and it's just absolutely crazy. Please come and try it. You won't right. find another class like it. Right. Well, Phil's sat there smiling across the across the room. So you're come coming. Right. <laughs> yeah. See, this is this is Adele, right? I've got to explain about Adele. Let me just tell you a bit more about her. Um, that because she's very very shy. You see, um, we don't invite people, do we? No. We tell people to come. Yeah. It's quite simple. You, yeah. you, 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 you come into my class. Yeah. Um, it's. It's the best way. Phil touched on this before about his clients, and I think you heard it. Did you hear these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and Phil was saying that for someone to be treated, you know, with um, you know stress, anxiety, depression, whatever, um, you know, your mind. I've always said I said this to people in the class, and I say, you know, you when you go and punch that bag or we do a technique or whatever, I said, it, I said your legs don't walk over and kick it, or mm. you know your hands don't go and punch it. Mm. I said they don't do it on the involuntary. No, no. You know, when you go to the toilet. It's not your tinkle having a winkle, um, you know, yeah. um, or your winkle having a tinkle, wrong yeah. way around. It, you know, your brain tells you yeah, when yeah. you have to do, you're doing that and it releases. And, you know, it's, it's your body Your body works from one million percent your brain, doesn't it? I have a saying in my class, your body only does what your brain tells it. Yeah. Strong brain, strong body. There you go. Do you know there's a lot of energy in this room here, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, pos and positivity in your life. Uh, because if you look at it, say you've got two guys who started uh, tire boxing, um, obviously you're training the physical side and they get really fit and they're going for a, a fight, championship fight or whatever mm -hmm. that is. You train them two guys exactly the same. One will go and boom, and you know, he win the championship, the other one's failing and he's failing and he's failing. But he's doing exactly the same as the other guy. you got to look at what's he thinking. Yes. What's his belief? Does he yes. believe he can win? The mindset. That? It's like it's the brain mindset. training, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah very much so. Mm. Um, you know, I think well, us three are all on the on the same page. I mean, it, it's funny that you know I'm saying that Phil is like you know we, we've crossed paths like we we have 
for years and yeah, yeah, yet we've all not actually met together <laughs> until today so you know i'm really really happy for you guys to jump on the first ever podcast and um you know because it's something that um you know it's massive in the moment isn't it you know uh, multimedia and um you know yeah. the, you know it's, it's the way the world's been shrunk down so everyone can communicate so right across the globe somebody could watch this listen to this and it might inspire somebody somewhere to oh. get off the backside do some hot yoga Come and see, you know. Um, yeah, this a, is what this is thing, what I you know. try to do in my class. Uh, give people an experience where I take them away from that everyday yeah. shopping and kids and and with my craziness, as you know. Yeah. Hopefully that comes through and yeah. it reflects in my class. Yeah, which it does. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've never heard any bad words said about, about any of your classes. I mean, only, you know, the words is like she killed me off. <laughs> and I, I don't think that's a bad word. You know, I get, it's, it's basically it's a result. You know, but the, the weird thing uh, is, the funny thing about people is that. You know, I don't, it's the same with Thai boxing. They go, oh, you kill me off. And then they come back again. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So you think, well, mm. I, I, think, I think the expression kill me off means mm, yeah. I'll, I'll be back. I think yeah. it's an Arnold Schwarzenegger statement. That yeah. Kill if me it, off if it was be e- back. If it was easy, you wouldn't come back. <laughs> yeah. If it was unjoy- <laughs> unenjoyable, you wouldn't come back. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. People yeah. leave with a smile on the face and a sweaty body. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So um, how, do you, how do you see yourself? Um, I mean... Between us, none of us are spring chickens, but no. um, somebody said this to me, and you'll give me your version. Somebody said, Sandy, how long do you see yourself doing Thai boxing? You've just done 40 years, you've just got your master's. Is that it now? And I went, no. no. I said, it's just like passing your driving test. I said, you can now go out and drive and go and see the world. Um, and, you know, I think you never stop learning and you can never stop teaching. I, I said, I'll stop when I die. That's what I said. People say, when are you going to retire, Adele? I went, when I die. <laughs> I'm never. I'm not going to become that older lady sat in the window twitching the neck curtains. I'm not. I'm never going to sit down and become that person. And too many people do, and that's what I'm trying to get people, young and old, yeah. to get away from. Right. There's more to life than yeah. just well, doing think, nothing. Do you not feel, um, guys? I mean, you know that there's too much emphasis on age. I oh yeah. Like milestones. I've, yeah. Do you know I've never. Do you know the only milestone I ever celebrated seriously mm. was two, the 18th and the 21st. Mm. Somebody said to me when I was 40, because they, they thought I was about 30, which is very nice, thank you, whoever it was, um, how are you having the 30th? And I went, I'm not old enough. <laughs> I said, no, I said, no, I'm not having the 30th. And I was like, I was like 40 at the time. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I was 50, somebody said, um, are you having the 40th? And I went, no. Yeah. And I've never celebrated a milestone because I just think, because yeah. people look at you then differently. Mm-hmm. If you said to somebody, said, I'm yeah. 50, and they go, oh, you, you can't, shouldn't yeah. be doing that at 50. Why shouldn't you? When there's people are doing the same thing at, um, yeah. at, at, at there's, there's, there's women doing yoga at 100. Mm-hmm. I have a lady what comes in my class who's 62. Um, since she's been with me, she's, well, she's not had two knee replacements. She's had them in previously. We've worked around it. She's working fine now. And she's lost loads of weight without even trying. Well, that's the next subject. I mean, we've only got like, we've got four minutes left. Yeah. Here, so we're going to wind up here. But I was going to say, what's the type of people that come to you, Dal, are they, you know, from what's what's the youngest and what's the oldest, I think you've just said. And the youngest is probably from 18 and I've had ladies up to 75 in my classes. Wow. I try and cater for the people who don't really go to the big commercial gyms. Right. Um, they want more of a personal touch, not that there's anything wrong with the big gyms, yeah. um, but we have a, a good crew, we have a good group of ladies and gents and everyone's welcome. So it's just tell us again, where do you do it? Uh, Gladstone Road, number three, uh, Bodywise Gym in Farnworth. Yeah. Um, my website's boltonhotyoga.fitness. I'm on Facebook. My phone number's on there. Give me a shout. Uh, we're very friendly and very welcoming, and we have a laugh. Yeah. No seriousness allowed. <laughs> I love that. No seriousness allowed. That's brilliant. Yeah. Who good's that? Well, I, I've got to say, like I said, we saw because I assisted from another mister. Um, I call it serious fun, Thai Box. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Because it is serious, Thai boxing yeah. is. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a hard sport if you've done it competitively. But you know, I, I'm like you. I think well, the youngest I've taught is three, mm. um, and the eldest in my class was a 62 year old um, uh, retired landscape gardener. And a quick story I'll tell you uh, what happened with him. He came to me and he said, uh, "Sandy, I'm 61 and a half, <laughs> and uh, I want to do um, for the rest of my life till I, I live my life out. <coughs> I want to do six months." Of doing something, this is why, you're, why, I'm t- why I'm talking about this, uh, till I die. Yeah. And he said, I've got some friends who've retired at s- between 60 and 65. Yeah. Within weeks and within months, some yeah. of them have died mm. because they just they just like fall off a cliff. Yeah. Mm. They just they, they, they give up. They're bored. And yeah, mm. and it's like, I'm, I find that really, you think like, right, I'll slow down now, you know, mm. I've, all this savings, I've got my money ready for. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, 
sorry, cut to the chase. He's, the first six months prior to, to me, retired at 61, sorry, at 60, 61 to 61 and a half, he'd done yoga to get himself a bit flexible. Yeah. Uh, Cause yoga's amazing. And you'll, you yeah, just tell us in a second yeah. there about the, I want you just to touch on what, you know, the benefits of it. And then he did six months Thai boxing with two private lessons a week cause he didn't want to do the classes. Um, and he said to me, uh, just before about five months in, he said, Sandy, at the end of this six months, please do not ask me to continue. He said, I'm, I won't be continuing. Because at that stage in your life now, you have seen friends die his age. Mm. He knows what he wants. Mm. He said, after here, he said, uh, I'm going, I, I can't swim. I'm going to learn how to swim. Mm. I'm going to do six months of swimming. Now, I've never seen the guy since. This is about 10 years ago. So I'm guessing he's probably jumping out of planes now. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? He might, might be climbing Mount Everest, I don't mm. know. Yeah. Anyway, the, the point that I said is that the benefits of yoga, I've, done a, I've only done two or three sessions. What are the main benefits of yoga, Adam? My outlook on yoga is slowing down your body's process of aging because you're keeping yourself flexible. That's oh, my main yes. focus because we all grow old and we become unflexible and we give up yes. and we should never ever mm -hmm. give up and just keep going. It's, it's strengthening and like I have a degenerative discs so basically my spine's crumbling so then yoga holds me together. Right, because the muscles will keep that yeah. in, in place. And when people say, oh, yeah. I can't do yoga, I've got a bad back, I can't do this. Exactly. Yes, you can. It's what you need to do. Right. It's mad because, you know, I'm not, you know, if I'm going to advertise, I'm going to advertise Thai boxing, it's what yeah, I've done yeah. for 40 years. But I had to say to people, when they, you know, like when I bump into people in general, like you do, mm. we all do, in the street, whatever, and somebody will come up to me and you'll know that they'll probably never throw a punch in the line. Yeah, yeah. But they want to do some type of exercise. And I said two things. I said, one, start walking. Yeah. Number two, go to yoga. Yeah. I actually advertise yoga and I've got no connections with it. I get no, no throwbacks from it yeah. or anything. But I always say that to people because I know they won't come to a Thai boxing class. They're mm. not in that physical yeah, shape. Yeah. They're not in that mindset. Mm. But they're looking for something. Mm. So I just think that to me is, is, is the best and a, a big stepping stone for people. Yeah. Anyway, guys, it's uh, it's that time. I think we're going to have to do a part two, a part three, a part four, a part five, and I think a part six with you guys. Yeah, yeah. You've been absolutely brilliant. I want to thank the pair of you because you're the first two. <laughs> we'll just come into here and have a wave there, okay, Paul, please. Okay. Come on, go and have a wave. Have a wave. There you go. I'm a wave to this one. And our fabulous Josh, the, kid, the techie man who's uh, here at Bolton FM Radio. We've been very kind enough. Keith and everybody here has been Cheers. kind enough to let us have the studio. Brilliant. Um, we're going to be doing this every Wednesday. And, um, you know, we're going to have to get you two back in. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from me, which is Adele, and goodbye from Phil, which is which is. Yeah, I thought you were going to say me again. Yeah. And it's goodbye from Josh behind the camera, yeah. guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.